Well, here we go. Welcome to the Cabinet Maker Profit System podcast, just for wood shop owners like cabinet makers, architecture mill workers, and closet companies. Those of you who are interested in the business of the wood shop business. If you want to work smarter, not just harder, you're definitely in the right place. Now, my name is Dominic Rubino, and I'll be your host. Today's guest is Adam Carroll. Today, we're going to talk about how to build wealth outside your cabinet business. If you're new to this podcast, you might be wondering what this podcast is all about. Well, I show contractors like you how to get back in control of their contracting business, even if they don't know where to start. You see, the truth is, you don't actually need a lot of extra time or a business degree to build a profitable and solid business. You just need simple systems that will show you new ways to do things the smart way. Simple systems that give you quiet confidence. For too long, our industry has been keeping secrets, and I'm here to put an end to that. On this show, you're going to learn how to use simple systems in three places, in the office, on the job site, and in your shop. More important than that, I also show people the secrets of business success, like we're going to talk to Adam about today, how to work smarter, not just harder, but also how to have a mindset of growth. Now, speaking of mindset, I got a couple of dad jokes for you. Again, if you're new to the show, you may not be used to the dad jokes, but really it's the reason most of the people listen. Most of you who are already laughing in spite of yourselves, knowing you're going to try some of these horrible, dry, groaning, eye rolling jokes yourself. Uh, So let's get to them. And hey, listen, the reason I tell you the jokes is because I want you to open up your mind. I want you to think about the possibilities in your business in a creative way. And laughter is a great way to get you in creative mode. All right. So think about this. What did the comedian say when he walked into the bank? This is a stand up. <laughs> um, here's one you can share with the kids. When ants go missing, who do you call? The Department of Finance. I, I waited a moment for you to, you know, get that one. This one, you can tell this one to really little kids, right? Really small kids. What did the duck say after he went shopping? Put it on my bill. <laughs> now, if we're talking to little kids and we want to make them laugh, and truly, is there anything better than the laughter of children? There is not. How do dinosaurs pay their bills? With Tyrannosaurus checks. <laughs> uh, for those of you who are pet owners, I've got a joke in here for you today as well. Nothing says I love my dog like spending more money on his haircut than you do your own. I just got my haircut the other day. I think it was 25 bucks. Felt like a ripoff, but how much would you spend to cut your dog's hair? Um, Anyways, here's a money joke because we're talking to Adam today. What's the difference between a $20 steak and a $55 steak? February 14th. I'll let you think about that one. Look, if you're a business owner who's curious to find ways to run your business profitably like a real company so you can have more time off to do the things you love, build a team you can rely on and grow a company that one day you can sell or pass on to somebody else or get us to the point where you can live off the cash flow. You're in the right place. I'm a business owner just like you, but I'm also a business coach. And the only people my team and I work with are construction and contracting business owners who want to get to the next level in their business. And I host this podcast because one day I want to be your business coach. As a matter of fact, I have a team of business coaches I have personally hand-selected and trained. I have very high expectations for the people that join my team, and I'm proud of every single one of them. As you listen to this podcast, ask yourself if you think that me and my team might be right as a tool for you one day to help you get to the next level. Now, with that being said, I'm going to go into business coach mode right now. I'm going to challenge you because in this episode, you're going to hear something. You're going to learn something or you're going to realize something. But on that, I want you to take action in the next 24 hours. And then I want you to pay attention to how that improves your business or your life. I hope you know that this podcast is built to educate, inform, and inspire you. So let me get into your head and I'm going to ask you an inspirational question. Are you happy being a contractor who runs a crew or two? Or do you want to be a business person who just happens to run a wood shop? By the end of today's episode, you'll know the answer. Let's get to it. Mr. Adam Carroll, how the heck are you? 
Dom, I am excellent. It's great to be with you again. Yeah, no kidding. You and I have talked two times. We have. Yeah, one in, it feels one like we're old quarter, friends. I know, doesn't it? Yeah, <laughs> one and a quarter times is what I was going to say. It's barely anything. Yeah. Yeah, it's the rounding error on a tape measure. Indeed. Yeah. Indeed. Well, actually, I shouldn't have said that to cabinet makers to be like, that is not a rounding error. That that's is a, not a round. That's a it's framer's a, rounding error. It's a 30 second as a rounding error, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> oh, you know what? It could be, but we're still offending some people. <laughs> There's a joke with uh, some of the architectural mill workers that, uh, you know, when you talk to some trades, they'll say, well, we're not building pianos here, right? But when you talk to this crowd, you say, well, we're not building pianos here. We're doing something nicer. Yeah, we're building something even more important. Even nice. Yeah. <laughs> um, so, I mean, you know the audience here, but the audience doesn't know you. So let me ask yeah. this question. I want you to be prepared for this, okay? Okay. Who the heck are you? And how is it you come to be speaking to all of these cabinet makers, architecture mill workers, people doing fine woodworking all over the world? Yeah. Uh, well, who the heck am I? I'm a financial educator at heart. That's That's what I love to do. And I find that that your audience in particular generally are craftsmen and craftswomen. They're people who are so focused on their their craft and being artistic and artisan and all of that that sometimes the money stuff becomes secondary. It's like I do it for the love of the work, right? And so, um, and maybe that's not true. No, <laughs> you, you know what? Face, but... I, I hate to interrupt you, but quite often when I have that first conversation with people, I'm yeah. like, what do you want? And they're like, oh, I want a better shop. And I want this. And, and, and I have to cut in at some point and go, do you want more money? And, but to their credit, I will say they don't want more money. It's what they can do with the money. It's usually Absolutely. to take care of family or to do something yeah. meaningful, but no I'll, doubt, I'll go, go no doubt. You. Yeah. And, and I think to add on to what I said about, you know, being craftsmen and artisans, what I find is that people who are very, very creative mm. oftentimes put money to the side as a level of importance. They know they need it yeah. and they're doing their work because they can make it, but at some level it doesn't drive their life. Yeah. And so what I like to do is bring the, some of the money decisions that they're making to the very, very intentional forefront, because if you make the right ones early on, you can do whatever you want for the rest of your life. Yeah. And I think that's the magic of, of what we teach. Yeah. Now you've got a background that makes it hard to do an intro. How's that for an opener? Yeah, that is a, that's a good opener. Yeah. Um, I, you did a Ted talk as I did, but you've got I how did. many million views on yours? I believe at last count, it was 6.2 million. Yeah. So mine has viewers, my mom, my sister, <laughs> uh, I made my kids watch. So I'm at like nine. Yeah. It's, <laughs> it's respectable. It's respectable. <laughs> I always say, whenever I introduce myself at events, I go, hey, I have this TED Talk. It, you know, it went viral for whatever reason. It has 17,000 likes on Facebook, but 12,000 of them are my mom. So don't pay any attention right, to right. those. It's just the same. I love my son. Look at him. Yeah, yeah. He's so we smart. never thought he'd make it, but here he is. <laughs> um, but you've also written a bunch of books, and then you've got something called The Shred Method. So just really briefly, yeah. what I'm trying to do, Adam, is give people context for why would you have the authority yeah. to lead, guide, inspire on this topic. So if you don't mind, give us that professional background so everybody understands before we get into the topic. Yeah, I um when I graduated from college, Dom, I was a I was a debt statistic. I had I had lots of debt. Um I had I had my financial head up, my financial, you know what, for a number of years while I was in school. Armed Lived like a rich college kid, then became a very broke professional. Mm. And I turned the tables in roughly 26 months. And I went from being deeply in debt to having a, a discretionary income of around four or $5,000 a month. And by the time I was in my mid twenties, my wife and I had lived our life very specifically and intentionally during those 26 months. Hmm. And it made all sorts of things possible in my life. And I realized, well, that was pretty simple. It wasn't always easy, but it was pretty simple. Mm -hmm. Why don't I just go teach that to other people? And I started teaching, you know, my lessons around money, what I call winning the money game to a variety of people, but namely college students at the beginning, because I was so young, they were the ones who looked up to me. Right. And then as I got older, I realized, well, the college students are like, gosh, I wish you were my dad. And I had to go to a different audience. Yeah. Start wearing <laughs> but, glasses, dye your hair gray. Yeah. Yeah. You know, yeah. I, I'm shaving my head bald and it just made me uh, more applicable to a different audience. But I really loved talking to professionals, particularly business owners mm. who were working really hard to build their business because one day maybe they would sell their business. 
But at the same time, I wanted to show them how they could build real wealth outside of their business as oh, well as inside it. of their business. Yeah. And um, and it's a very simple kind of mindset shift that I teach. But for a lot of people, it's like showing the caveman fire because they've never been exposed to this before. Well, you know, I. it's interesting you say show the caveman fire because I went to college and I'm a forensic anthropologist. <laughs> like I, I have a degree in archaeology. As you yeah. can see, I don't use that anymore. So I like I appreciate the caveman and fire analogy. Yeah, because you yeah. literally studied when the cavemen were introduced to fire, right? Yeah. Actually, you know, one of my jokes when I go hunting or fishing with my son and my dad is that looking at the stars is caveman TV channel one. Mm -hmm. And then looking at the fire, that's caveman TV channel two. I love it. That's it. Yeah. Um, well, take us into that a little bit. Yeah. Solving debt problems. Yep. Dealing with that money that there's there has to be a secret. There has to be magic. There has to, it, where does it start? Yeah. You know, it's a great question. Um, you know, here's where it starts. We, from the time we are very, very young, mm -hmm. we are introduced to the idea of debt and the idea of debt is normal, natural, and good. Right. And you'll hear people say quite often in, if they're raised in any traditional household, well, mm -hmm. we'll always have insert the blank. We'll always have credit card debt. We'll always have a car payment. We'll always have a house payment. Just accepting the yoke, the weight of you the You just burden. accept it. Yeah. yeah. And I think in doing so, what we sometimes fail to, to pay attention to is that when we pay ba back bankers the way they intend us to, we become their compound interest vehicle. And so yeah. as their compound interest vehicle, if we just dutifully make the payments and we never question it, then what we are doomed to is a life of making debt payments, not a, a life of building wealth, Servitude. both inside and outside the business. That's right. Th this already feels like an episode that everybody needs to share with their kids. I hope so. Yeah, I hope so. You know, it's, I, I say when it comes to attitude and hiring people, I shouldn't have to teach you what you should have learned at your kitchen table growing up. Yeah. Right? When it comes to like work ethic and attitude, showing up on time, quality. But I think this money conversation goes to the same thing. We didn't talk about money at my kitchen table at all. Money yeah. was nothing we talked about. My parents were, um, I don't want to say the bad word here. My parents were both union workers. Yeah. So, and the boss was the bad man, always the, totally. Yeah. Uh, you know, the, uh, I won't use the word, the bad guy. Yeah. Greedy. So that, but and, but oh, I had man. to fight against that. And yeah. I can only imagine how many other people grew up at a kitchen table where we didn't speak about wealth. Yeah. We didn't speak about wealth creation. We spoke about debt as, ah, you're going to have it. So it's interesting that you came to that same realization so young. And then obviously you've got ideas for people to get out of that. I do. I do. And and I think the going back to how do you really speak to the heart of this is uh, if our mindset is, well, I'll always work and hopefully someday I can, you know, whatever it is, retire early or sail off in the sunset or have that second or third home or whatever it may be. Yeah. If if someday is part of the vernacular, someday may never come. Right. But if you have a strategy of how to create it, then you could be there in three to five years, seven years, ten years at the most for most people. Yeah. And I think that's the the main distinction that I create, Dominic, is when I'm you know educating an audience or working with a client, I'm helping them vision cast what what would it look like in your ideal dream state. Is it a second home? Is it a boat? Is it paying for college for your kids? Is it just having no fear or or worries around money at all? Is it buying funding schools or yeah, buying a new shop, bigger shop, yeah. nicer tools, whatever it may be. Let's figure out how to do that, but do it in a very strategic way that creates efficiency with the money you're making mm. and allows you to get there far sooner than just the a, a wish and a prayer and someday. Um, cause I really truly believe almost everyone out there could be out of debt completely in three to five years. It may not be to be completely out of debt. It may just be to create equity and liquidity that allows you to go build your, your business Something bigger. Yeah. yeah. It's interesting that you start with the conversation around mindset because yeah. I start with the conversation around mindset. Sometimes people look at me weird. They're like, uh, oh, it sounds so business coachy. Yeah. Yeah. And yet I find that mindset is the, de the, the defining thing. Can I take a, just a brief second to tell you a story? Please. It starts with, I got my haircut yesterday, right? 
didn't change color, just length. And so the 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 owner of the barber shop is the seat next to me, and I'm with his like number two guy. There's six or eight seats in there, right? It's a yeah. bustling barber shop. And the guy that cuts my hair talks success, but he's negative. I can't get mm. ahead. I'm gonna go buy a a farm in my old country. Uh, how come you can never find opportunity here? Opportunity's gone. You know how much they want for rent for a barber shop? And he's talking right next to his boss. Is at the, the seat next to him? Well, his boss is a new immigrant to the country, married a really nice girl. He's now got two kids. He's on his second home, which he's purchased in our market. That's hard to do. Wow. He's also running a six seat barber shop that's crazy busy. Yeah. And this guy standing right next to him is complaining about how it's impossible. And I'm, I'm shaking, my, you can't really shake your head in the barber chair, but that's the difference of mindset. These guys are four feet apart. They're in right. exactly the same environment. And the mindset of one is going to impact his life to the negative forever. The mindset of the other one, the owner of the shop, he's a nothing but an upward trajectory. Yeah, no doubt. It, it, it reminds me of, I'm trying to remember who said this originally. It may have been Dr. Wayne Dyer. Um, but when you change the way you look at things, the things you look at change. Oh my gosh, that's and, really that's and we funny. often yeah, and we often um bring that up with our kids. My my youngest son's 16. And um, you know, quite often he comes home from school. I can't stand this teacher and this, you know, this stings and this stings and this doesn't work. And I said, Hey man, what you focus on expands. And so if you're focused on what's terrible, you're gonna see more of it. Like if we change the way we look at things, maybe the things you look at changes. And I'm trying to instill in him this positive mindset and, and, you know, we're creating our reality all the time. So on the money side, what I often hear people creating is just like your, your uh, barber friend is no opportunity. I'll always be in debt. Things are too expensive, right? Can't make enough money to get ahead. Yeah. And so guess what? You start to create that reality because that's what you're seeing. And that's what you're trying to, trying to make true effectively. None of us want to be wrong in what we say. Mm -hmm. So if our mindset is, Oh, I'll never get ahead. Then I'm going to make sure I never supporting get evidence. Ahead. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Exactly. And what I started saying was, I wonder how I would pay off my house, not in two years time or five years time. How would I pay off my house in a year? And, and when you ask yourself that question, mm -hmm. number one, possibility begins to be created and you start to look for ways to make that possible. Yeah. And, and number two, anyone who's, who's saying, I'll always be in debt. It's like, well, there's cognitive dissonance there because I don't want that. So I'm not really going to pay attention to that. I'm going to pay attention to the people who've done it and the ones who are showing it's possible. And I'm going to study yeah. the math to see how it's done, et cetera, et cetera. I think you're you're spot on, Don. The, the, the mindset piece is the number one piece that people have to get locked in on. It's everything, you know? And it's it's so incredible that mindset is the important de de determining factor. But some people listening will go, well, I have a great mindset, but it's negatively geared. I can yeah. see it from the outside and that's fine. A lot of people listening to the show are, you know, I, I guess the filter to get to find this show is in itself a mindset filter. So if you're already listening, you're probably yeah. already on that top echelon, great that point. top, right? Because you're not going to go look for an improvement podcast in the cabinet space. And if you guys don't mind me adding, most cabinet shows are not going to bring a financial expert like you. <laughs> this is not what you expect on a cabinetry podcast. Right. But wealth creation and success and positivity and building a business that's solid where people can be employed by you and you can have an impact in your community and leave a legacy. That's what I want to create. That's so huge. I go find guests like you and I give you all the job of giving us the wisdom. It's that's awesome. My that's my mindset. Well, and how powerful is it for a shop owner that has multiple employees to then also pass down the kind of financial wisdom that they're, uh, you know, they're, they're seeking because imagine the the power of having, um, you know, a, a shop, a factory where people are thriving financially as a result of what you're teaching them. Yeah. And this, I mean, this goes to the heart of what we're building at the shred method is a team of people who they could work anywhere. They choose to work here because of what we're teaching and what we're doing for people. But the money, you know, the money is somewhat irrelevant at some point because could they go make more elsewhere? Probably. Do they want to? I don't know. I don't think they're going to get the same level of fulfillment or purpose out of the work. Yeah. 
it's interesting. I, I hope hopefully people steal that line from you and their recruiting efforts. Can you say it one more time? So folks, and the reason I'm asking Adam to repeat this is because I want you to steal it from him. I'm saying it straight to his face. Yeah. But when you are hiring somebody for your office or for the floor, maybe an install crew, Adam, what, how is it you say that people should come to work for you? I would love for people to come to work for me because of the the purpose and passion they have for the work, not the money they're making. And and I think the way I stated it was the people on my team, on my employee, um, they could go work anywhere else and probably make more money. I don't have any doubt about that. Mm -hmm. You know, not that we're on the low end of the pay scale, but we're in middle to middle high tier. Mm -hmm. And I have great people. But what I want them to do is to learn from me and learn from what we teach people to make money irrelevant so that they come to work for the passion of it, for the love of it, not for the dollars. Yeah. I would think that being on your team, I would I would be working to learn. Yeah. Not to earn. And totally. I will always make more money with knowledge is power, right? I mean, yeah. ignorance is poverty, as yeah. we know, right? So no I, doubt. I, I can imagine being on your team. I'm going to get more wisdom and insight than going to work somewhere, getting a check, but being kept in the dark. And and I would, I would add that it would not surprise me at all if the folks that are working for some of your, your listeners have heard growing up, well, you'll never make a lot of money as a fill in the blank carpenter, yeah. woodworker, trim yeah. carpenter, whatever, maybe. And, and yet what, what, what kind of gift would it be for an owner to be able to show people that they actually can make a lot of money doing this work and become and wealthy. Can. Yeah. Yeah. And they can. We've got so many people here. I think I was saying it to you before the the interview started. There's so many people that started with, uh, I built a headboard for my aunt. That was my first job ever. And then I did another job and then I did another job and that was 12 years ago. And now we're doing a couple million dollars and Dom, this is where the transition comes in. Dom, I don't know what I'm doing. Like I just sort of <laughs> built this business by accident. But they're they're already up to let, let's say a million dollars, which is yeah. incredible. If yeah. you view the world as having this, and money again is just a measurement; it's not the yeah. end goal. But if you view the world as a place where money is flying all over in the sky, it's just yeah. flying between me and you, somebody else. When you make a million dollars, that's what is it like eighty six thousand a month? Yep. You figured out a way that if you were standing in the middle of a field that money that's floating all over the world, you funneled some of it down to you. There's this stream of money coming to you. That's a million dollars a year. You created that out of nothing. Yeah. The value you brought to the world is you were able to redirect a million dollars, 83, 86 grand a month through you. That's pretty incredible. And by the it way, is. folks, it's incredible if you're doing 250 or 250 million. It is incredible. Totally. We, we use that kind of similar analogy all the time, Dom, and, and say, I think the number is there's $4 trillion circulating the globe on a daily basis. Wow. And the majority of it is in zeros and ones, you know, bits and bytes and digital yeah. currency transfer. But if you imagine it in the ether, just in the air flowing back and forth, mm. if, if it's a river, as an example, you need a teaspoon dipped into that river to create a, a million dollars. Now, what you're saying is true, uh, whether it's a quarter of a million, a, a million, 250 million, doesn't matter. It's all valid, but you're, you've created a stream yeah. for that money to flow to you. And the more value you create, the bigger the, the stream becomes. Yeah. Um, yeah. Super powerful. So let's talk about the how, because people yeah. right now are listening to this as they're walking their dog. Their dog, I can already tell their dog's going to be happy because they're going for a very long walk now. <laughs> yeah. But some guys are listening in the shop or they're in the truck driving between jobs. Yep. You know, everybody's doing something different. But how? Yep. Let's let's talk a little bit and share stories if you don't mind. Like, yeah, I don't name to. names. We, Fred and so, Barney is fine, but yeah, I have Fred a uh, I have a contractor friend. Let's call him uh, Oliver. And Oliver started uh, he started following the shred method some time ago, and he was he was a guy who who had a basically a trim carpentry business and was doing well as a sub for yeah. a number of home builders and was trying to figure out how to, how to grow his business. And when we first met, I said, you know, let's just run through all of your numbers. I just want to know where you're at. Yeah. And specifically what I was most curious about Dom was how much of what he was making in his business was going to him personally. Mm. And what I find often is that Business owners, number one, there, there's lots of investment in the business. It's new equipment, it's new tools, it's the fanciest toys, it's all that stuff, right? 
And yet at some level, what we want to be doing is we want to be creating wealth outside of the business as well as inside of the business. Mm. So all of the tools and the know-how and the gadgets and gadgets that you have, that's that's all value in the business. Outside of the business, it is your home equity, it's your retirement funding, it's college planning for kids, it's creating in what I call massive, passive, permanent streams of income. Ooh, because like on, on the months that maybe there isn't as much you know, construction going on or not as many projects to work on, is there enough revenue coming in from somewhere else that you literally can go, money's irrelevant. It doesn't really matter to me as the business owner. And I found that when you get to that point where money is irrelevant as a business owner, mm. your your attention is entirely focused on making the business successful. I, but, I have to add yeah. something there as a need that I've seen yeah. happen more and more. And I think it's relative to the age of the audience and myself, taking care of aging parents, mm. right? We think about sending our kids to college for sure. But then at some no point, doubt. especially when you're the business owner, it's time to take care of mom and dad yeah. in a way that maybe only we have the flexibility to do that. There's actually a, a gentleman who's a podcast listener and has been a client. And uh, he had to get braces for his daughter and he just cut it out of cash flow. But this is after we totally changed his, uh, he did home remodeling. So not just cabinets, right? Mm -hmm. Totally changed his business. He cut a check for seven grand for his daughter. You've never seen a guy prouder. He was just so happy he was able to yeah. cut that check. And what I came to find out is that his son is older. His When his son needed braces, it was massive stress at the mm -hmm. kitchen table. How are we going to finance it? He needs the yeah. braces. Can we wait? We don't want to wait for his son to get braces. He needs them now. Huge stress. Yeah. But then when it came time, you know, he had obviously done coaching and started to put some systems in place, started totally. to make free passive cash flow from the business. Yeah. He just stroked a check and he's just so happy. You know, yes, that makes me it, happy. It it's uh, I I completely echo your sentiment. I love stories like that where someone said, "We just cash flowed college this year." Yeah, how many people do that? Yeah, we just stroked a check for tuition, room and board, and yet business owners really should be able to do that. I mean, we we can create an environment where there is enough mm. liquidity and discretionary income to be able to do that on the regular. Um, the key to this is, and this is what we found with Oliver is that in running through his numbers, if if he was making, and I'm gonna use round numbers here, if he was making a hundred grand a year yeah. in, ta in take home pay, yeah. 30 grand of it was going away in taxes right away. And about 35,000 of it, almost 40,000 of it a year was going to interest payments. So, so this is a guy who made a hundred grand, but was really living on maybe 30, 35 a year. Yeah. Um, that he actually had to support his family. The rest was either in taxes or the interest expense on debt. Mm. And when we started reorienting how the cash flow is rolling through his business and what he was paying down and paying off, we freed up another fifteen hundred to two grand a month in discretionary income. And when you do that, it's like, okay, now things are possible. Now braces mm. are possible. Now cash flow in college is possible. And mm. it requires that someone, Again, using mindset, you you call the mindset into play about, hey, is all this financing, is it necessary? Why are we financing all these things? Yeah. Let's pay cash. Let's pay these down. Let's pay them off. Let's create more cash flow. Um, and it's it's eerily possible within 18 to 24 months for most people to have a complete turnaround in their financial picture. That's crazy. I want to I want to get more into the how. But I also yeah. want to come back to a number that you just said as part of a sentence. Yeah. 1500 to two grand a month that turned back into cash that he could use. Yep. But I want, I, I do this for people as well, is I want you to remember what it, where else could you get 1500 to two grand a month that's causing stress in your life right now, which is having your other spouse work or have mm. to work when maybe they want to do homeschooling or maybe they don't yeah. want to go work or, you know, maybe they've got other things to do, but yeah. to, if you had a job, how much do you have to make in that job a month to bring home two grand a month? Taking taxes into account and forgetting about what state they're in. You, what would you have to? It'd probably be at least 35,000 minimum. A year. Yeah. yeah. $35,000 a year job. That's going to be almost full time. Yeah. But what you're saying is by changing my mindset and using different tools, I could free up that kind of cash flow so that dot, 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 in Dan's case, buy braces for my daughter, 
so yeah. that maybe my spouse doesn't have to can if they want absolutely you can if you want yeah. but you don't have to yes that's kind of cool what i love about what you just said so that dot 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 which i'm thinking i need to rewrite some of the copy on my my website because it is we do this so that dot 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 people can retire early and comfortably we do yeah. this so that dot 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 people can write a check for braces or college or yeah whatever i got goosebumps just hearing the story back yeah it's <laughs> awesome let's do some more how though i like this oliver yeah. story plus he's a trim carpenter and so yeah you thought you that hundred grand that he brought through i thought you were going to say out of the hundred grand he was he was mixing up how much product he moved through mm. versus how much he actually made from the business but to take us more into what you how you change this mindset. And obviously you've got tools. We haven't got to the tools yet, but take yeah. us, keep, keep on the Oliver story. So the mindset for me quite often, and it's around this, this financing. Mm -hmm. um, when I mentioned, we don't have to finance everything. If you think about it, people are financing everything in their life. They're financing their retirement because they make yeah. little lump sum payments over a period of time. Yeah. They're financing their home, financing their car, typically financing college, expenses through student loans. Yeah. Sometimes we finance dinners out because we put it on a credit card and don't pay it off for two months or three months. And furthermore, people are financing things like future car repairs, the the vacation they want to take next summer, the, you know, fill in the blank on any of these, the, the upgrades sure. you want to do the house, the new furniture, the blah, blah, blah. And what this looked like for Oliver was he had sinking funds for every single thing you could imagine. So he had a sinking fund for for uh, future car repairs. Mm -hmm. He had a sinking fund for a future vacation fund. And when I say sinking fund- Yeah, I'm not sure what a sinking fund is. It doesn't sound yeah. good, but- It's um, essentially what it is, is, is like a savings account prescribed for that one thing. Ah. So he would put $50 a month away because he knows he's, his truck's going to need repair work at I some see. point. Okay. He would put $150 a month away for the vacation that he and his wife would like to take next summer sometime. And with all of these sinking funds, what he effectively is doing is creating these little mini buckets of money mm -hmm. that are completely inefficient. Because when we have all these little buckets of money, they're they're going towards something in the future. But right now in the present, we have interest expense on the car that we're buying, the, the student loans that we're paying off, the house that we're paying for, the credit sure. cards. And so what I started to do is I said, hey, let's push pause on all the sinking funds I'm going to show you how to make these really efficient because the money that you're making needs to have a job. And the job right now is to make sure that that, that money is limiting or eliminating the amount of debt that you're paying or the interest you're paying on the debt that you've taken out. And we found that within about 12 to 14 months, he had knocked out three of those big debts that freed up the 1500 to two grand a month okay. yeah. in extra discretionary income. And he and didn't it was really money. have to change anything he was doing. His lifestyle doesn't sound like his lifestyle changed. What, he if, didn't if, change his what lifestyle. Would, one what would I have order? seen looking at his lifestyle that changed? You would have seen him be much more intentional about when a deposit happened. So if he paid himself, mm. whether it was a you know as a W two salary or a, a distribution or what have you, um, he would be very intentional about where that money went. And so with the shred method, what we do is instead of focusing on Oh, you got to eat beans and rice, rice and beans and cut out the cafe or the, the, the lattes and all that stuff. I'm not a big believer in that. Like people so, are going to, they're going to, they're going to do what they do. They're going to eat out. They're going to, you know. Yeah. So he's not saying to his kids, you can't do hot dog day this Wednesday. You can't no. get school pictures or you can't buy a school jacket. No, nope. None of that stuff. No, nope. so I wouldn't have seen what, what I'm trying to find out is would I have seen anything looking in from the outside? And I guess this is an ego question, which I need to check myself on, but yeah. I'm thinking from his perspective and selling quote unquote, his spouse yeah. on it, did their lifestyle change? Their, their lifestyle only changed. And I would say that this is sort of true and indicative of all of our clients. Their lifestyle changes in that they start to look at expenditures way more intentionally because what's happening through the system is they're seeing their debt go ching, 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 ching down, you know, downhill. And they're feeling more and more free. And so they're like, do we really need to go get new furniture this weekend? Or are we just killing time? Go to Ikea. Yeah, that's right. I, exactly. I should never say Ikea to cabinet makers, but <laughs> you know, it's one of those stores you go into 
for one thing. And then you're like, how did we, it's like Costco. Like, how did I spend 400 bucks? Because the cards are enormous. That's yeah, why. Because you just keep, you keep yeah. shoving it in. Um, yeah, they become more intentional, Dom. And I think what would, what you would notice a change about them is they will feel lighter. They they don't have the the sort of the worry lines and the the stress around how are we going to afford this. Yeah. And a great example is my wife grew up in a household where they had they had very little money growing up, and it wasn't because her parents weren't hard workers. They were just in low wage jobs, mm -hmm. you know, early on, and so she was she was raised in a house where they only bought stuff if it was on sale and they had a coupon for it. Yeah. And there, you know, we call them, uh, basically my, my mother-in-law is the coupon queen and my yeah. wife is the coupon princess. Yeah. But what they do is they, they, this created a worry about how they were going to pay for things, you mm -hmm. know, as they live, they live their life, their normal lives. And my wife, when I got married, she had this very, very high anxiety about what if this massive bill comes, where will the money come from? And the way that we operate the shred method, that fear is completely eliminated because yeah. what you're doing is you're creating more and more liquidity, meaning um, it's it's pools of cash that you have available to you should you need it. Mm -hmm. And it's not necessarily like, oh, I'm definitely going to use this. It's in the event of an emergency, we have this stockpile here that we can tap if we need it. Mm -hmm. And the shred method helps you create more and more of that as you go along. Yeah. And it works for business owners who can have up and down, you know, cash flow goes up and down and totally. they're just still trying to figure out. Does shred stand for it? It has to stand for something. S it doesn't. You would think, you would think I have this great uh, yeah, acronym, acronym or something. Shred. So what I tried to do is I tried to buy shred double D.com yeah. and the second D is for debt. So shred debt. And um, I'm still working on the guy who owns the domain to sell it to me. Well, hopefully he doesn't listen to the show because yeah. now he's, he's got to negotiate. <laughs> now he knows. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Yeah. So when we look at this, what's the impact that, that you're aiming for? Like, what's the big impact at your company, the shred method? Give us that vision that you've got for yourself. Well, we exist to create freedom for families and individuals and the freedom can come in a variety of different ways. Um, I think I may have shared this with you on a, on a previous show, Dom, but you know, the, the freedoms that most people have are fourfold. The first one is financial freedom which we're all after at some level. We want to never work for anyone, um, at, including ourselves, right? So financial freedom is first. Uh -huh. Financial freedom leads to time freedom because when we have money, we have time. Mm -hmm. Time freedom leads to relationship freedom because when we have time, we spend time with people we want to spend time with. Mm -hmm. And then last but not least, um, you know, the relationship freedom leads to service freedom, the ability to be of service to other people. Oh my so gosh. What I ding in all the bells. Yeah. What I aim to to create for certainly for, for cabinet makers and owners of shops is I want them to experience those four freedoms, the what we call the four legacies. Because if they have financial freedom, they have no financial worries, money's irrelevant. They will have lots of time to be creative, to devote to their people, to spend time with family. Mm -hmm. That creates the relationship freedom. And because of who they are and, you know, more money just accentuates who people are naturally. So if you're very giving and you have lots of money, you'll be oh, an even better giver. Money is a magnifier. It is a magnifier. Because I'll tell you what, I've seen it myself. Uh, when, if you're not a nice person, there's, there's shorter, there's other words that define not a nice person. I'll let everybody come. But if yeah. you're not a nice person with no money and you suddenly come into money, you just become a bigger, not a nice person. Not a nice person. Yeah. Yeah. Totally. I've, and I've seen it happen myself and it's so sad to see. Yep. Money's a magnifier is my point. Money I just think, magnifies who you truly are. And if, if the money for us is, I mean, uh, you know, let's be honest, all of us want things and we'll get things and experiences with the money that we make, but at some level, we're not really here to be employed. I heard a speaker one time say, our, we were not put on this earth to be employed. We were put on this earth to be deployed. And, and some people figured out their deployment is to be a hyper creative that builds gorgeous cabinets in people's homes mm. that they can, you know, they can uh, admire and brag about and, and love on for the rest of their days. Um, but, but the reality is most of us are here to be of service to other people, whatever that looks like. So if you're a shop owner, 
Yeah. The job actually may be to help improve the lives of the people that work for you. A lot of people that I talk to say that their their greatest pride is being uh, a, a place for solid employment for others. Yeah. And it's that servant leadership mindset, yep. service to others before self. No doubt. Yeah. yeah. And imagine the service that you can provide to someone else, not only in making sure that they have work to, you know, to uh, execute on every day of the week, but also then to guide them and shape them on, Hey, here's how you're using money uh, appropriately or intentionally. And here's how you can create wealth doing what you do. And if you stay Mm -hmm. with me, right, you could be one of the wealthiest people here. Um, which reminds me of a story. I was, I was lucky enough to meet a gentleman who owned a business that's about 40 minutes from me. And I, I met him at a conference and um, I asked him, well, what do you do? And he goes, I'm, I'm recently retired. I said, what did you do? He said, I, I recently sold a company that creates the dye for mulch. So he sold dye that, that colors mulch. Oh, okay. Dye. So when I you thought, buy yeah. black mulch, I thought you meant a mechanical mulch. dye, like the cutting tool. No, no, no. no. This he, is like he makes that liquid orange... dye. That yeah, orange yeah. dye. Yeah. 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 It looks like and fire retardant. Huge vats to, you know, who, whoever yeah. sells mulch. And um, I was like, what a fascinating business. He goes, it, it was. It was a lot of fun. I ran it for, I was 13 years or 15 years or something. And I said, what was the biggest shock to you in, in the sale? And he said, the second wealthiest person in my company was a forklift operator. And I said, how is that? He said, he, he funded his 401k as, as complete as he could, you know, mm-hmm. maxed out his 401k every year, maxed out Roth IRA, bought stock in the company. When I opened up uh, the ability to buy phantom shares of stock, yeah. he did everything he needed to do in the business. And he was the second wealthiest person in the company when I sold it. On the exit. On the exit. Yeah. yeah. I, and I, I have to add to that. I, and I've had to live by this. It's not what you've got. It's what you do with what you've got. Mm. Like if I'm small, I'm going to take advantage of the fact that I'm small and nimble. If I'm large, I'm going to take advantage of the fact that I'm, you know, large and able to do things at scale. But whatever you've got, it's what you do with what you've got. So people always say, well, you know, there's no opportunity. I don't, you don't have friends in high places. I don't have friends in high places either. You know what I do? I go call people and I talk to them. I make friends with the people I want and I ignore the ones I don't. You got to, this world is yours to make. And and I think yeah. everybody listening to this show knows that because they, to, to whatever extent they're at, they've already done it. Yeah. You know, you think about the filter. I wish I had the statistics in front of me, but how many kids play baseball in America right now? It's like 16 million, like almost every kid at some age plays baseball, right? Yeah. But then put that through a filter. How many play baseball at high school? And then how many play baseball in college? How many got drafted? to pro baseball last yeah. year. It's like, I think the number is 600. Crazy. It's not much, but from 16 million, it goes down to 600 and you're like, okay, well, Dom, that's a statistic. That's probably wrong. Okay. Let's say I'm wrong. Go find the numbers out yourself. Yeah. But then think about how many cabinet makers, architectural mill workers, people that make closets that do wine cabinets, all that stuff yeah. are in the, in the, in the market in North America. There are let, let's a couple million. Right. How many listen to the show? A couple thousand, like high in the couple thousands. Yeah. But then how many take action? Mm. And it's the same with everything. We could be talking to chefs about making bundt cakes. It would be the Boy, same okay. thing. There's a filter and we all intentionally put ourselves through the filter. We ignore certain information. We take action on certain information, but yeah. the action we take leads to the results we get. That's as obvious as I can make it. But if, if I choose to ignore the fact that I can have financial discipline, if I choose to ignore the fact that I can be intentional about building my business and my life, then I'm going to have a life by accident or I can have yeah. a life by intention. I Nobody thought this would be a woodworker show, Adam. I know, right? It's crazy. We got really deep on this. Um, your comment about baseball, though, triggered something for me. Well, my I, numbers I, are wrong? I, no, no, no. Well, baseball's I, I all about probably, stats. There's people I think it's there, probably right? all accurate. <laughs> the, the, there was a... Uh, I don't remember where I saw this. It was a meme or or a comedian or somebody somewhere said this, but he's like, you know, the bats today that, that, uh, little leaguers buy parents are buying four or five, $600 bats for their yeah. kids. Yeah. And, and a coach is in the dugout. He's like $7,000 in bats in this dugout, not one hit out of these <laughs> kids. <laughs> you know? 
So it's not it's not what you've got. It's what you do with what exactly you've got. precisely. And yeah. and I I would be remiss if I didn't mention this to to your listeners because I know if there are two thousand of the highest of the high end folks out there that are doing this work, that one of the reasons to really investigate you know how, how you're building wealth outside your cabinet making shop is it's for your kids it's for future generations because if you're if if you find yourself looking for the efficiencies great mm -hmm. but what i would encourage you to do is then teach your children about those efficiencies because this is generational wealth building and and when you start stacking it from one generation to another we're talking about creating a, a massive legacy for future generations to come yeah all on what you've learned and implemented in your in your practice um so if nothing else and you mentioned this at the beginning share this with young people the more young people 20s 30s you know even 40 year olds that i can share this information with the the closer they will be to freedom at a younger age as a result of of what we're teaching them yeah you and I align on so many things because I, I can tell you that some people listening are going to say, well, my kids don't want to follow me into the business, Yeah, which is fine. They don't have to follow you into the business, but they're watching. My kids are watching me. Your kids are watching you. And yep. maybe you don't have kids, your nieces and nephews, but they're watching you. Wherever I get put away after I die, however that happens, I'm going to get forgotten in a couple of generations. My, yep. my greatest hope is that one day, let's say in a cafeteria, two kids are talking. One of them is my grandchild. And she is maybe talking to a friend who's, let's say, started a landscaping company. They're mowing lawns, right? Still, will that happen in 60 years? Probably, right? 60, 70 years. And the kid who started the landscaping company is going to have a problem of some sort. And my granddaughter is going to say, you know what my grandpa always said? It's not what you've got. It's what you do with what you've got. Yeah. If that sticks and that goes forward, I don't need a tombstone. Yeah. I don't need anything. I if my that. granddaughter says, grandpa always, or no, no, they would, they're going to call me no, no, always said, blah, 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 blah. That's true legacy. That's yeah. passing it forward. Now, if my granddaughter, go to, granddaughter goes on to be a dentist or I don't know, work at a growth, it doesn't matter. It doesn't yeah. matter, but she's taken that wisdom and now she's going to teach her kids. That to me would be a true legacy. It doesn't, yes. doesn't mean they have to buy my shop in my head. It'd be nice yeah. if they did. They don't have to. Yeah, I love that. Um, what it, what it reminds me of is, um, there's a, a, a program I went through called life plan and in life plan, there are life gate moments and life gate moments are when you had a conversation with someone or it was an inter interaction or a boss or someone that you, that it, imp they had impacted your life in such a way that they opened the life gate, you step through it and your life was never the same. Ah, uh. And I love this concept of life gate so much that um, someone asked me, well, what do you want said at your, your funeral if somebody's eulogizing you? And I said, oh, it would make my world if people were there, at, you know, at, whether it's in the middle of the ceremony or after, but people are saying, you know, I had one conversation with Adam and it changed my life. And, and just if I can be a life gate provider for a number of people, that, yeah. that would be enough for me. Yeah. That's interesting. You and I align on a lot of things there. Um, before we just turn this into a love fest between Dom and <laughs> why don't we, uh, if people want to find out more about you, well, actually yeah. give us a closing thought, give us a closing yeah. thought. And then from there, if people want to find out more about you, how do we do that? Cause you're a yeah. very interesting guy. And I, I like the way you see the world. Well, I appreciate that. Um, my closing thought is this, there, there are more efficient ways that every single person out there could be handling their money. And my job is not to sell anyone on my way versus someone else's way. It's really just to, to articulate and educate people. Here is a different way that you can think about doing this that will get you to your result faster or differently or more efficiently. Um, and, and I absolutely love having those conversations with people just to create the life gate. So if folks are interested in having that with me or my team, um, our website, Dom, is theshredmethod.com. We have a 30 minute masterclass. Uh, we're more than willing to take a 20 minute discovery call with people just to say, Hey, let's run through your numbers quick and plug them into our calculator and show you what's possible. Mm -hmm. um, but if nothing else, our goal is to ask a couple of well-pointed questions that might get you thinking a little bit differently 
from the mindset perspective. Excellent. So it's called the shred method.com. You got it. Adam, thank you for being on here. I really appreciate it. This is, this is why people listen to this show. We don't talk about tools. We don't talk about wood. This is the show is about the business of the contracting business. And one other thing that I, that I promised to people here is that this show is going to make you a business person who just happens to run a cabinet shop. Mm. Right. So that little mindset shift is my, is what I go out into the market saying, I have to find the right guests to align with that. And I really appreciate you being here because I think you did that today. That's awesome. My pleasure, Dom. Thanks for doing what you do. This is great stuff. Awesome. I'm pretty sure we're going to have you back again. Careful what you wish for. (laughs) All right, Adam, have a great day. Thanks, you too. Thanks. Well, 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 what did you learn from Adam? And what can you put in place? There's so much wisdom to take from that. Even if the only thing you got was the fact that you need to think more about your own personal finances, that's fine. But I'm going to ask you to take action. Take some sort of action for your own personal finances. Do something to move you forward. All you have to do every day is take one simple forward step. Um, Hey, I want to read you a testimonial that came in from one of our clients because it's important to hear how other people are putting these knowledge nuggets in place and how they're making changes in their business. This is a testimonial from somebody who's actually in the woodwork industry as well, just like you. And he took something called Bootcamp. Bootcamp is a program that we um, offer uh, every once in a while to businesses that are sort of in that under a million dollar range, right? Because people still need help and I don't want to leave anybody hanging. So Bootcamp is fantastic. Uh, here's what he had to say about Bootcamp. <clears throat> the Bootcamp course was everything more than what I wanted and needed. I walked away with actionable goals and was able to identify the next steps for my business. Highly recommend it. So that's nice to hear. And uh, I look forward to maybe one day having you write one of those for us as well. Listen, today what we're going to do is we're going to simplify and solve a common problem. And the reason I want to do that is because all of us encounter these problems, but taking action is another thing altogether, right? There's uh, uh, somebody who's got a shop right across the street from you has largely the same problems you do. It might have to do with scheduling. It might have to do with how they're using their machinery. It might have to do with how they're dispatching their guys, buying their products, whatever it is, right? But the difference between you and them is you listen to this show. That's where the difference is right there. They probably don't listen to the show. If there's 10,000 people listening to the show, that's only in North America, uh, parts of Europe, Australia, New Zealand, and, and, and actually a growing number of people in South America. But you think about that across the world, that's really not that many. And so that means you've got a leg up on the people around you, definitely in your city, maybe in your city, maybe in your state or your province if you're up in Canada. There's one or two other people who listen to the show. And what that means is if you take advantage of the things you learn here, well, you've just changed the playing field. And after taking advantage of the things you learn here again and again, what happens is you become that contractor that's growing and changing in ways that nobody else can figure out because you've got a secret. That's what it means, right? Keep that in mind. Get some perspective. Just because you found this show doesn't mean everybody found the show. Now, of course, I say that and I still want you to um, tell your friends about the show so they can listen, but don't do that from, don't, don't not do that because of scarcity, right? But understand that the information is available to all sorts of people, but people don't take the information. And I always laugh when there's another weight loss book that comes out and it says, you know what you should do to lose weight? You should eat better and you should exercise more. Well, that's been written in books a, a, a million times. And yet we still have to write it and we still have to read it to get it. There's a number of reasons behind that that have to do with how adults are motivated, inspired, and educated. We won't get into that today. But I want you to keep in mind that when you take action on the things you learn, you're going to move your business forward. The company across the street probably isn't. Probably isn't. The business problem we're going to solve today is the problem of wasted efforts It could be wasted efforts in the job site. It could be wasted efforts because of quality control, uh, go backs, punch lists, but it could also be wasted efforts because you're estimating incorrectly. You know, estimates that are made incorrectly echo throughout the whole company or, you know, every once in a while, I like to use funny analogies. If you like green peppers on your pizza, you know what I'm talking about. You eat the green peppers and then it repeats on you for a couple hours later. That's the same thing as doing an estimate wrong. You made your mistake in the estimate and now you got to pay for it throughout the whole job. You finish the job and you wonder, why did I ever do that? 
I knew I was going to lose money. I don't know where I'm losing money, but I'm losing money. We have a tool here. It's called the Go Back Report. And if you haven't had a chance to download that report yet, you really should. What the Go, it's, it's actually the title, and, and many of you know this. I'm going to, I'm looking at multiple screens here. If you're looking, if you're watching this on YouTube, welcome. Hi, you'll see me looking at a bunch of different screens. If you're just listening to this as a podcast, well, you can watch it on YouTube as well if you like. Um, what I'm trying to help you figure out is the cost of one hour of your business. What does it cost to have your business run for an hour? If your shop opens at seven, you flick on the lights exactly at seven o'clock. There's a cost to get you from seven o'clock to eight o'clock. How much is that number really? Do you know that number with absolute confidence? Do you absolutely know the number? Maybe your number's $87. Maybe your number's $37. Maybe your number is $152. But if you don't know that number, that's the pit in your stomach that I'm trying to get rid of, right? And it's easy to figure out. It's, well, yeah, no, it is easy. It easy it's easy when you got the system, when you have the formula. Anyways, we call it the go back report because that's easy. People usually text me for it. They just say go back and then they send me a text message. And that way we know we'll ask you your email and send it back to you. But um it's got various titles because we use it in different ways as business coaches. First, we use it to figure out the cost of an hour of your business. We use it to calculate the cost of a go back, but we also call it the one hour job estimator. If a job only take, have you ever had somebody come in and say, Hey, can you just machine this? You just edge, but it's only going to take an hour. And then one of your estimators says, Oh, it's only an hour. I don't know. I'll charge a guy 50 bucks. I have no idea. Does it charge 50 bucks to run it through the CNC or does it charge? Does it cost 50 bucks to run it through the paint shop? Does it cost 50 bucks to do an hour's worth of free estimate for somebody? I don't know. And you don't know until you know, right? And so the way you know is to use this cheat sheet, this form. It's actually an Excel spreadsheet. It's called the Go Back Calculator. And what it does is it puts all the costs in there, including, by the way, one little line that your spouse, I'm going to say your wife, but whoever your, your life partner is, is going to be very happy to see that you've included. And that one little line is actually row D. Row D is this simple little number. Think about knowing this number and think about the impact on your business if you added this to every single estimate and every single job going forward for the rest of this year. It says this, enter your net profit goal for this year. <laughs> Hold on, Dom. Rabino, what's this sorcery you speak of? You want me to make profits in this business? We've never done that before. I'm disgusted by your thoughts. <laughs> if you don't agree with me, ask your wife or ask your life partner, whoever it is. Should we worry about net profit goal here? You'll get the answer. You'll get exactly the answer that you expect. Right? That's just D. So um, there are 11 different cells to fill out. Sorry, there's 10. And then the 11th automatically fills in itself because it calculates everything. But what I find, what myself and the coaches on our team consistently find when we start working with a new business coaching client in the wood trades is that when we first go through this particular exercise, and we do this one-on-one -on -one with people, you can get it as a free download, do it yourself, right? Do it on your own, quietly in the corner. Again, hey, listen, let me do this. If you download this thing, and you take a picture of yourself at a coffee shop, having a coffee, take a selfie with you and the coffee. I want to see a picture of you with the coffee, with the form in front of you. And you send that back to me. You can text me at the same number that you get the report. The, my cell is 315-903-7853. But if you texted me, I'll buy your coffee. I'll send you five bucks. Like this is not how business is supposed to work. I'm paying you to learn, but I want you to do this. And I'd love to have a picture of you. And I'd love to, want, you know, one day I want to have a coffee with you. So in the meantime, let me buy your coffee. Take, print this off, go to a coffee shop, take a picture of yourself. I don't care if it's Dunkin' Donuts or Tim's or Starbucks. It doesn't matter to me. But I want to see a picture of you with this thing. What you're doing is taking one step to move your business forward. That's it. Just one little step. But you got to fill in all these boxes, right? The boxes themselves, every single box that you fill in is going to help you understand your business a little bit more. And it's going to help you sharpen your pencil. And what happens from that is when a customer comes back to you and says, hey, can you look at your price again? You'll be able to say, absolutely, we can. And you know where to go look at your price. Or you're able to say, uh, Mr. and Mrs. Jones, thank you for the offer for us to bid on your job. We just can't 
we can't sharpen our pencil anymore on this. If let's say you're doing architectural millwork and it's a GC or a, a builder that's come back to you and you say, well, I, I appreciate it. Uh, we're going to hold on our price. If the other contractor is not able to fulfill, we're happy to help. But you got to have that bravery. You've got to, I don't want you to burp from eating that green pepper at the beginning of the deal. I don't want you to suffer the indigestion of estimating a job that you're not going to make money on. It's not your job to build kitchens for free. Is that the first time you've heard that? <laughs> it's, not, it's not your job to build kitchen cabinets for free. It's just not. And so you have to know this number. Is your number 32 bucks an hour? Is your number $152 an hour? Until you know that, you won't know. Anyways, if you want this document so you can do the math on your own, you should have it. I think you're going to be surprised at what you find out your number is. There's a number of profit leaks in here. We talk about profit leaks all the time. And so get this document so you're in a control position. Once you're in a control position, you've got choice. You're, when you've got the ability to make choice, you're able to make good decisions. When you're backed into a corner, when I'm backed into a corner, I'm forced to make bad decisions. That's why it's so stressful, right? But when you've got options in front of you, when you've got choice, then you can make the right decisions with the less stress, with more predictability, right? So the, one, the other thing this might do is tell you, do more of this and do less of that. Anyways, I want you to have this. You guys know how to text me already. If you've listened to the show more than twice, you know that I give out my cell phone number here. Just text me. It's super simple. Text me and say, go back. And the number to text me at is 315-903-7853. Just say, go back, and then we'll shoot this off to you. And then the rest is up to you. But hey, listen, go for a coffee and have me buy the coffee. I'm happy to do it. I'll have Helen send off a Amazon gift certificate. Um by email, like same email that you get the report at, and then you can cash that in. And that's how we'll do the coffee thing. Until then, I really appreciate you listening. I really do. I hope you guys know, and I hope you can tell. Um, one day, I actually want to have a coffee face-to-face. -face. Maybe when we've gone fishing together or hunting ducks or something like that, I'm going to put something together in 2024. Maybe we get a chance to do that. But if we don't, at the very least, thank you for listening to the show. I hope we get to talk one day. And uh, you have a good one. We'll talk to you soon. Bye-bye.